Kristen Denny Chambers, clarinetist, composer, and founder of Clarinet Playground. This is video number 21 out of 40, going through all of the etudes in Finger Fitness Etudes Book 2. This one is for Clowns on Parade. Clowns on Parade is dedicated to Michael Lowenstern. He has performed, recorded, and toured as a soloist and with ensembles of every variety. He's widely recognized as one of the most innovative bass clarinetists in the world. Career highlights include long tenures with the Chamber Music Society of Lincoln Center and John Zorn, and touring with ensembles as diverse as the Steve Reich Ensemble, Orpheus Chamber Orchestra, and the Klezmatics. To date, he can be heard on over 60 recordings, two of which have won Grammy Awards. Michael has also released eight solo albums of his own, none of which have won Grammy Awards. Michael also currently serves as Principal Creative Director for Amazon Advertising's Automotive Brand Innovation Lab, and in 2021 received his first patent for a piece of mobile technology that you wouldn't understand because he barely understands it. Prior to Amazon, Michael worked on Madison Avenue and received dozens of awards for his advertising work on E-Trade, Verizon, Pepsi, and many others. Using skills from both pursuits, he is currently in his 11th year creating content for his YouTube channel to the delight and consternation of millions of viewers across the globe. He lives and works in Brooklyn, New York. I was first exposed to Michael Lowenstern's music in the year 2000 when his album 1985 came out. Up to that point, I had never heard a bass clarinet, let alone a clarinet, do some of the things he did on that CD. It grabbed my attention in ways that nothing else had before that. What do you think of Mike Lowenstern? So when I attended my very first ICA convention in the year 2000 at the University of Oklahoma, I knew I had to meet this person. I saw him at one of the exhibit tables and I went right up to him and introduced myself. I simply had to meet him. I was so young at the time and I was so happy that I had the courage to approach him and introduce myself. Michael is one of the most genuine people that I know. What you see is what you get. And there's something really wonderful to be said about that. Some people say, never meet your heroes. Well, I would say that Michael blows that saying out of the water. If he is one of your heroes, definitely make a point to meet him. You'll be very glad you did. And if you're watching this video and you've never heard of Michael Lowenstern, and especially if you play a low clarinet, Head over to his website right now at earspasm.com. Check out all of his content. He's even selling instruments now. And be sure to visit his YouTube channel. You will be so glad that you did. Now let's talk about this etude. At the bottom of each page in this book, you'll find one or two practice tips. For this one, we have commit to the accents to make the music come to life, and be sure to notice the different articulation pattern in measure 29, and we'll go over those later. At the top of each page, you'll see two finger drills. These are really important. Make sure you practice those and you're very comfortable. At this point in the book, we've hit the second half. So now we're starting back over with the low notes and increasing the interval sizes. So now we have low E up to A and low E up to B flat. When I originally wrote this, the intention was to use your right side low E up to A and right side low E up to B flat. That keeps the movement in one hand and it also makes sense in the context of the music as you'll see later. But feel free to use other combinations of fingerings for an extra challenge. For the style and character of this piece, it's fun, it's brisk, it's playful, it's got humor in it. So if you really just think about the grand entrance at a circus where all of the clowns come out and we'll be able to represent those different characters as well. So here's the beginning. Now notice how in measures 21, 29, 45, and 53, we have these different characters. So stoutly is going to be like really robust and lightly will be really light and playful, almost like a miniature poodle. And boldly will be strong and daring, almost like a tiger. And cheeky, you think like a silly monkey or something like that. When we look at the rhythm on this etude, it's really basic or fundamental rhythms that you would find in a compound meter. We have constant eighth notes, some with a hemiola effect. If you look at measure 18, we have this two against three idea. Dotted quarter notes, quarter eighths, and some eighth rests in between eighth notes. <laughs> now 
now we'll get into some areas where you're going to need some extra focus. So accents are very important in this etude. You can showcase them a little better by playing non-accented notes a little softer. Sometimes we get a little hung up on the idea of pushing lots of power on an accent, but really we can push less and just pull back on the non-accented notes. <laughs> Also, you want to notice and bring out the descending patterns around pedal groups and pedal tones. So if we look at this first example again in measure 5, we have F, and then we have G, A, G, F, D, G, A, G, F, D flat, G, A, G, F, C. So the G, A, G, F is the pedal group, and pedal is like something that keeps coming back or it really comes from the organ. And if you think about how you play the organ or the piano, when you hit that pedal and you hold it, it makes the tone delay or hold out. So because we play the clarinet and in what I would call traditional writing, we can only play one note at a time. When we want that effect, we have repeated notes going in between. So this first example is a pedal group. So G, A, G, F keeps coming back. And then if you look down in measure nine, the pedal tone, which is an individual note, is the thumb F. And in measure 17, it's the open G. So what you can do is you can leave those pedal notes or pedal groups out and focus on the moving line. And then you can always add those back in. So I'll do this first example starting at measure five without the pedal group and then with the pedal group. I'll do the same idea in measure 9 and measure 17. Measure 9 and 17 have that hemiola figure I was speaking about earlier. It's not really a change in rhythm, but it's definitely a change in emphasis. So I'm going to play those a little bit slower and bring those out even more so you can really hear them. Now measure 17 almost seems like a contradiction because the accents are on the open G's, which is the pedal tone. But that still works because it showcases the hemiola and you'll still hear those lower notes coming through. The main theme comes back multiple times and with different dynamic levels. So make sure you're really making a difference because it'll help you showcase more characters. So in measure five, we're at mezzo forte. In measure 13, we have a little bit of an echo at mezzo piano. And then measure 53, where we're cheeky and being really brash, it's back to forte. In the Stoutly section, this is really where you're going to find your finger drill work. It's all squished into this one section. So we also have to really be mindful of our pinky choices. Now I mentioned before that the low E's, I'm preferring to play those on the right side and it really makes sense as we go through, especially when we get to the end of this second example in the Stoutly section. So we have right side E up to A, right side E, and then left side F, right side E, A, right side E, left side F, right side E, B flat, C, right E, B flat, C, E, C, B flat, G, right G flat, left side C, because we're going to be doing this again and land on that right side E and this motive basically repeats itself. <laughs> Now 
As I mentioned before, we want to pay really close attention to when articulation patterns change. So in this main theme in measure five, we start out with an accented short note followed by a slurred group and then an accented short note. But in measure 29, when that theme reappears, there's much more articulation and it really plays into the lightly character. In the boldly section, I would recommend adding a slight tenuto on beat two where we have the lower notes. Otherwise, those can really be easily skipped over or barely speak. So you can lean on those a little bit and that'll help. And then finally at the end, we have this really dramatic slowing down leading to a fermata, very, very loud, and then subito piano and big crescendo towards the end. For those with a low C instrument, there is an option on page 55 with some low C notes. Always learn the original first as a rule, and you'll find low C material appearing as the main theme down an octave. And now for some final thoughts on this etude. This one is fun. It's silly. It's full of character. So challenge yourself to see just how many clown characters you can represent in your playing. There are many places where you can take advantage of this idea. Mostly aim for clear articulation, impeccable rhythm, dynamic and character contrast, and show the accents, especially in those hemiola bars where we have the two against three. Think of Michael Lowenstern and his sense of humor combined with his refined and meticulous playing. So you can fold his personality right into your own interpretation. And most of all, just have some fun with it. To listen to a beautiful recording of this etude and all other etudes from this book, head over to my website, clarinetplayground.com. Trevor Stewart has recorded all 40 etudes beautifully, and they are available for purchase there on my website. Since this etude is one of the samples from the book, Trevor has graciously allowed me to share his recording here. So sit back and relax and enjoy Trevor playing Clowns on Parade. <laughs> Feel free to join us in the Clarinet Playground group on Facebook where we play and post for each other. And head over to my website at clarinetplayground.com for more fun music and books. Thank you so much. And then finally at the end we have this <clears throat> frog in your throat. <clears> throat>